Well, welcome back to the Home Lab, and today I've got a physics build for you. We're going to use all the knowledge we know about electricity and mechanical systems in physics to build ourselves an electromechanical light chaser. Okay, so here we go, fingers crossed. You're gonna be the first to see if it's actually working. Three, two, one, go. So I saw one of these on um, YouTube a while ago and I thought, okay, I can do that. I can build something like it. Obviously it's not gonna be the same. It's gonna be my own version, but I actually happen to have the right bits in my workshop to build one. And they've been sitting gathering dust for a long time. So it took quite a long time, but I'm gonna show you how it works and how I built it. So as ever with me, there's a bit of a story. And when I was a kid at school, um, there was an electronics sort of electrical bit shop in town. They don't sort of exist anymore, these places, with bits sort of broken out of electronics equipment. And in the shop was a Strauger Uniselector switch. And I didn't know what it was. Um, I didn't know what it did, but it looked interesting. And I've had it in my collection for nearly well, 40 years, and I've kind of had it and never done anything with it. And so when I saw the light chaser, I thought, right, now is the time to put this thing to some good use. So the one you can see photographed now is the one I've had for all those years. And I had to get a couple more um, just to uh, build a sort of bit of a test rig to get this to work. And I'm really pleased I've been able to use the one I bought as a kid all those years ago. So there's quite an interesting story behind these uh, Strauger switches and um, they probably won't be familiar to many of you, but uh, back in the day when you used to dial telephone numbers, um, these would be in the exchanges and they would be clicking round and round and round as your dial went round and sent pulses to select the number you were trying to dial. But the history of them is really interesting. Um, before these were invented by Strauger, uh, what you did was you picked up the telephone and you asked to be put through or you were put through immediately to the operator. Uh, yes, the president, please. And they had a big wall in front of them with all the numbers that were available locally. And they would pick up a plug and plug you in to the number you wanted. And this is where I find it really interesting. Um, Strauger was an undertaker. And um, he reckoned that when people were phoning up and saying, can I uh, have Strauger undertakers, please? Um, the person in the exchange, it was nearly always women and girls back in the day, was putting the plug in, not to him, but in fact, to a rival undertaker. And rumor has it that the girl or the woman doing the plugging, it was their partner or their boyfriend. So Strauger was losing business. So he thought, how can I get rid of the manual plugging, which allows for cheating? Uh, and he invented this switch, which did the work of the women and girls who were using the plug boards. So I've spent many uh, afternoons, um, it's been raining a lot, so that doesn't matter, and evenings building myself a Strauger switch light chaser. And it's been a big, long project. I have not yet turned it on, so you're gonna be the first to see it working. So let's go over to the bench and see if it does actually work. Okay, so let's wire up the light chaser to the lab power supply. I've got a little mains one, but let's test it on this one first. So we need about 50 volts to make it work. We've got about 25 on each side here. So we're gonna wire in series, turn on the power supply, and then dial up about 25 volts on each side. Doesn't need to be exactly right, but there we go, 25 and 25. So we're ready to go. So let's connect the power supply to the light chaser uh, power input. So a couple of crocodile clips off the power supply. That's one. And that's the second one. And we're now ready to turn on. 
Okay, so here we go, fingers crossed. You're gonna be the first to see if it's actually working. Three, two, one, go. Wow, that's amazing, it is actually working very fast. So the first thing I decided to make was this Perspex light panel. And uh, what it's got is holes drilled in it. I had to drill 101 holes. Um, it just turned out that's how many there were with my little Proxon uh, bench drill. And then I poked LEDs in uh, from behind the holes. And uh, there were three mil fit, but to make them really tight and to make sure they weren't gonna fall out, um, I then glued them in from behind. It was then a case of taking the wiring from each of the LEDs and wiring it to these terminal blocks so every LED has a separate connection. So wiring up the LEDs took quite a long time and there was quite a lot of cable management and in the end what I decided to do was I wired up the ribbon cable um, to the switches first um, which I think actually might have been a mistake I'm not sure um, both jobs were as tricky as each other and then um, I put the LEDs in after that and it's quite a long process and after putting them all in it was quite a long process of actually testing to see that I'd made every connection perfectly and uh, some hadn't made properly but I found out which those were by individually testing each LED connection. So let's explain how these uniselector switches work and they're really clever. The first thing to understand is here is an electromagnet. And above the electromagnet here on mine is a set of switch contacts and they are normally closed. They're normally joined together. When we feed DC to the electromagnet coil, it magnetizes and attracts this piece of metal. As it attracts that piece of metal, these switch contacts are pushed apart, are pushed open and it switches off. The magnetism in the coil disappears and this piece of iron flicks back. But of course, if it flicks back, the switch here is now connected together again. The coil energizes, attracts the piece of iron, opens the switch, and this process goes on and on and on for as long as there's a DC voltage present coming in to the electromagnet. The next thing to note is about the uniselector switch, and it's the electromechanical bit that I particularly like, is as this piece of metal is being attracted and released and attracted and released by this switching mechanism here on the uniselector, what it also does is the metal bar is connected to a little ratchet system, and that ratchet system, it's, it's hidden underneath here, pulls this cogwheel around. So as it goes forwards, it sets uh, the little clip that's gonna pull the cogwheel around and then when it releases, it pulls it one place and another place and another place and another place and another place, etc. So you can see these wipers here touching each individual LED connection. And as it gets to the end, it sends a pulse across to the other uni selector to cause it to flick one place forwards. Now, when this one goes off the end, there's another set of contacts here. It's a bit sticky, this one, to keep the process going. So let's explain how the main brains of the unit works. And I found this really quite complicated. I, I understand it completely, but because there was so much going on, um, in the end, I actually had to draw myself a little circuit diagram, which is unusual for me. Anyway, uh, this switch or uni selector has 25 positions on it.
So what it can do is it can light 25 individually wired LEDs. The problem is that there's 101 LEDs and I've paired one pair together. So there's 100 sets of LEDs to light. So uh, the switch, what it will do is it will click round that's the clicking you can hear when it's running, to each one of those positions and then reset back to the beginning. Uh, in the case of this one, it's actually got two sets of wipers, which is quite clever. So one does 25 and the other one is free to do nothing. And then that comes back round again and does the 25 again. But if you think about it, that would only light 25 LEDs. So we need another switch and that's this one over here that forces this one to not connect to the top 25, but there's 25 below that one, and another 25 below, and another 25 below that. So, what's going on here? This clicks round and selects the top row of connections to the first 25 LEDs. When it reaches the very end, it sends an electrical pulse to this switch, which clicks on one position. That one position then selects the next layer or stack in this. So that's LED 26 onwards. And then when it reaches the end of the second layer, it sends a pulse to this one, which clicks on again to the third row and then reaches the end, then to the fourth row. So we've then got to the hundredth LED. And then finally, when it reaches the end of the fourth row, this sends it another pulse and says, can you then reset back to the top row and back to LED one. Now, quite complicated that, but that explains why you see all these loops of cable here. So it goes select layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. Then this loop says back to one, back to two, back to three, back to four, then again, then again, then again. And then this is gonna reset back to the beginning. So in summary, we've got 25 positions, 25 below that, 25 below that, and 25 below that. And then a uni selector that will select the top row first, then the next 25, then the next 25, then the next 25, and then reset. And if each one of these is wired to one LED, it will light each LED in time. And the crucial thing is, did I wire the first LED to the first connection, the second to the second, the third to the third, etc., or did I swap some around? So as far as power goes, it's fairly simple. The uni selectors all work off about 50 volts. And so I've made the whole thing run off one power supply, 50 volts. I fitted a little mains power supply here, but I haven't actually wired that up yet. I'm, I've been running off the bench power supply. And um, I've got an old sort of GPO uh, switch here, which I thought was rather nice. And then uh, the voltage, 50 volts, goes to the uni selectors and there's a resistor here to drop the voltage to about 5 volts so the LEDs get about 5 volts each. So I hope you've got a good understanding of how this works now. In summary, this electromagnet causes this switch to go all the way along the top 25 contacts on the 26th it sends a pulse to this one, which clicks one position forwards and feeds power to the second row of contacts. And each contact is connected to one LED on the light chaser. And if it goes through four rows, in other words, a hundred contacts and all the individual LEDs are wired in order, you'll see the light chaser working. Well, that's been great fun and I'm really uh, pleased it's working. It's funny when you build these things because uh, once it's built, um, what do I do with it now? It's quite a heavy object. Um, maybe I'll put some hangers on it and hang it on the wall or do something like that. But it's um, not something I'm going to turn on every day. But still, the fun was the building process. So I do hope you enjoyed that video and you can see how, if you know a little bit of science, a little bit of physics, you can bring together a few ideas to build a rather fun project. Anyway, if you like my videos, um, do subscribe and make sure you click on the bell so you um, get notifications of when the videos are coming through. And uh, if you're feeling really generous, I buy all these little bits of 
uh, equipment to build things uh, with my own pocket money. So uh, if you feel like supporting me, uh, there's a link below in the comments to buy me a coffee, but um, don't feel that you have to. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.